Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. ESCOM delivered its State of the System briefing this week. Terence Creamer attended the session and joins me to talk about the prognosis for electricity supply for the summer months. Welcome, Terence. Hi, Sashni. Now, load shedding was intense this past winter. Uh, what is the summer outlook? Yeah, we had our worst ever year or a winter of load shedding uh, in 2020. This despite COVID, where we saw a massive initial drop off in the demand for electricity as lockdowns kicked in, that has since recovered. So it, it, it did come as a bit of a shock, though, that we had such an intense period. But it just shows how vulnerable our system is, how our under-maintained <coughs> coal plant is really still very unreliable and unpredictable. And uh, the, the outlook, I suppose, and that was what uh, Andre de Reuter and his team delivered this week, is that we remain vulnerable to load shedding. And what's happening now is that we're really entering the, the traditional high maintenance summer months. So it all depends on how much unplanned outage there's going to be during this period. We know that Eskim's got this big reliability maintenance program and that's going to rise. Um, but if the, um, if the uh, unplanned outages are above the 10,000 megawatt level, which they have been often, we're going to remain vulnerable during this period, at least until April when they think that system uh, will start stabilizing because of the, the, the maintenance that they're undertaking. And then uh, the, the from September, they think there will be a, a much more lower risk, well, lower risk of, of um, load shedding because the coal plant should be in better shape. Big emphasis is being given to ESCOM's maintenance program. Yes, we know that uh, ESCOM's fleet, coal fleet, not the nuclear plant has been maintained really well and has performed really well. And, uh, but the coal fleet was never maintained as per the, the, the user manual, mm -hmm. unlike the new, uh, Kuburg power station. And therefore, it's been run too hard for too long and under-maintained. And therefore, we have this uh, perpetual problem of unplanned outages. So we, Eskim never really knows when there's going to be breakdowns. And then they've got, also got partial load losses, which come from a number of uh, different things. But there's the, the issue of coal quality has been a problem over many years. But the focus now is very much on this reliability maintenance, doing the maintenance as per the user manual, um, doing the midlife refurbishment. Actually, we're probably too late for midlife refurbishment. You must realize that this Eskom plant is average age now close to 40 years old. So uh, as with any piece of equipment, whether it's your car or whatever, if you haven't maintained it, you must re realize it's going to have reliability problems. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's this big push to up the, the number of megawatts out on planned maintenance, do the maintenance properly, get it back into the system uh, as per the, the, the project uh, schedule, because that's also been a, a problem over the years where it's, uh, units are supposed to come back on a certain date and then they fail to come back on that date and then it leaves the system operator vulnerable because they, they lack capacity. So uh, really, that's really the big focus and it seems there's some credibility around this program. There's a feeling that this reliability maintenance is starting to gain real traction. It was delayed initially because of the lockdown, but now we are in full swing and up over 10% of Eskom's plant is now down for uh, planned maintenance, which is a good thing, not a bad thing, but it does leave us vulnerable, as I said earlier, for the next few months. And summer's always a vulnerable period, you know. We've had wet coal issues and all those, those periods during the, the rainy period of the, the sort of north of the country, that's where most of the power stations are. This is our wet season, and uh, generally, this is generally when we're most vulnerable. So definitely a risk until at least April, um, and then the risk will sustain until September when uh, Eskim thinks that uh, the e energy availability factor from the remaining units, some units are never going to be returned, but from the remaining units will be uh, far, far more stable, and therefore the risk should lower um, uh, 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 thereafter. And to rid ourselves of load shedding, Eskom says we need to look beyond itself. Yes, Eskom is saying we have to look beyond Eskom for the solution. This is very important and it is a message that I think energy commentators have been trying to get across the government for more than a decade. That Eskom, uh, yes, it's part of the solution, but only part of the solution. It really now doesn't have the financial wherewithal to do the expenditure it needs to do in, in, in building 
new, mostly renewables-based capacity that needs to come into the system to replace um, the lots of coal that is going to be decommissioned over the next 10 years. About 10 uh, gigawatts of coal is going to be removed from the system uh, and it has to be replaced by mostly, as I say, renewable energy. Uh, Eskom doesn't have the money to do that, so it has to be uh, independent power producers that come in with capital and skills. Um, and uh, we see that um, uh, Gwede Mantash, the Minister of M Mineral Resources and Energy, has signed off uh, together with NERSA on a determination to procure about 11,000 or 11.8 gigs of electricity over the next three to five years. That uh, Eskom is saying, and energy experts, is, is far from sufficient, uh, not, not, because, uh, not just to cover uh, any growth that could come back into the economy, which is at this stage, th there's no visibility of that, but really to cover uh, the decommissioning of the Eskom plant. So th that has to be a big focus. We need to get those procurement programs underway. We do have the 2,000 risk mitigation pro 2,000 megawatt risk mitigation program underway, but that's really very short term and not sufficient. The big ticket stuff is the ongoing rely, uh, regular procurement of new, mostly renewable energy capacity backed by flexible generation. So we need energy and we need capacity to back that up and uh, we need to get into a, a regular routine of doing the annual procurements at a, at a scale that's sufficient to cover that, the, that gap that's mm -hmm. going to emerge. That's already here, but that's going to really start emerging when we start decommissioning. And the first three plants are already earmarked for decommissioning, uh, and uh, that will be happening before 2025. Thanks for speaking with us, Charles. Sure. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.